Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently, we are in the fifth module of our machine learning course and this module is all about mathematics for machine learning. So, we have started with linear algebra and in the previous video, I have explained to you about what is meant by these vectors and where we use vectors in machine learning. So, uh, in this video, I would like to explain you about some important vector operations that are very essential for our understanding. Okay. So, in case you are new to my channel, hi. In this channel, I am making a hands on machine learning course with Python. If you want to learn my course from the beginning, you can go to the playlist section of my YouTube channel. So, there you will find module wise playlist. So, you can uh, start learning my uh, course module wise in that uh, playlist. Okay. So, with that being said, let's get started with today's topics. So these are the topics or the vector operations that we will cover in today's video. So they are about vector addition. So we will see how we can add two vectors mathematically and also graphically and how we can do the same for vector separation and how we can multiply a vector by a scalar. And finally, we will understand what is the significance of an angle between two vectors. So these are the basic operations that we will be seeing in today's video. Okay. So first of all, you know, I'll just give you a quick recap of what is meant by these vectors when it comes to computer science. So first let's understand about scalar. Scalar is nothing but a number. So it is just an individual number. So it can be 20, it can be 40 or it can be 100. It's just only one number. Okay. Whereas vectors are nothing but list of numbers. So it can be either a row of you know numbers or it can be a column of numbers. So we can have only one row or one column. We cannot have multiple rows and multiple columns. So if we have multiple rows and multiple columns, then it becomes a matrix. When it comes to vector, it contains uh, numbers or values in only one row or in one column. Okay. So this is not like, you know, uh, our physicist would describe a vector or a mathematician would describe a vector. So they would say that vector is something that has, uh, you know, both magnitude and direction, but we won't take that definition in computer science. In computer science, vector is something that has multiple numbers so or you can just consider an array as a vector okay so it is very similar to an array in computer science so now let me explain you what is the significance of vectors in machine learning let's say that there is a person and we want to find whether this person has diabetes or not and we have this data so this data represents so the first value here so you can see this uh, 89 so just a second so you can see this 89. So this 89 represents the blood glucose level and 66 represents the blood pressure. 23 is about skin thickness and 94 is insulin and 28.1 is the BMI of the person. So this is a single data point. So you can see here all these values can be you know put in a list or it can be put in an array. So this particular entity is an example of a vector because we have understood that vector is nothing but it is an array of uh, values. So you can see here, this is also an example of vectors. So this is how data get processed in machine learning. So we will feed this data set to a machine learning model. So the difference is that we will use several data points, but each of this data point or each of this, uh, you know, row or entity is an example of a vector. Hence, it is very important to, you know, know about all the different operations that occurs in a vector to uh, understand how the computation works. So all the computation that goes inside a machine learning model will be based on these vectors. So understanding this is very important. So now let's understand vector addition. Let's say that there are two axes. So one is the x1 axis and x2 axis. So in uh, machine learning, we, uh, you know, sometimes the variable y is used for the target variable. So in the previous case, you can see here that uh, we wanted to predict whether the person has diabetes or not. Right. So that prediction, whether it is yes or no, will be uh, the y variable. So this is the target variable. So we won't take the y axis here. So instead of that, we will take the axis as x1 and x2 instead of x axis and y axis. Okay. So that's the reason. So it is not that significant. So in this uh, x1 and x2 coordinate, we have a vector and this vector is 2 comma 3. So this is nothing but this point. So you can see this arrow here. here. And if you take this point, uh, it is uh, the coordinate of this point is nothing but the vector so 2 comma 3 so it means that there is two units in this x axis and three units in this y axis so it is this point so this is an example of a vector so there is another vector so this is nothing but uh, three units in this x axis in the positive x direction minus 2 in negative uh, y direction or uh, negative x2 direction so here there is a point and the coordinates of this point is nothing but 3 comma minus 2 so now we have two vectors okay and now we need to add two vectors, this 2 comma 3 vector and the 3 comma minus 2 vector. Okay. So now let's see what is the result we can get if we, uh, you know, add two vectors. And the important point to note here is 
the vector should be in you know in a same shape to add uh, two values uh, let's say that we have uh, three values in one vector so two three and one let's say that we have three values in this vector and two values in this vector so we cannot add vectors which are you know which don't have a same shape so in this case the two vectors have same shape so both of them have two values so like that we can add vectors only if the number of uh, elements is the same in both the vectors okay so now what we will do is we will do element wise addition so this two will be added to this three and this three will be added to minus two so you can see here it is just elemental addition simple elemental addition and when we add it we will get this five comma one or five one as our uh, the uh, result of this addition of two vectors okay so this is the resultant vector now instead of doing this you can also get this result and the addition of these two vectors from this graph so what we can do here is you can draw this dotted line so you can take this point so this is a second vector point and just draw a dotted line and from here also you can draw a dotted line so now we can get this rectangle and then you can join this diagonal so this point and this point so this will be our addition of two vectors so if we if you take these two vectors and if you uh, just uh, you know join through dotted lines and if you take the diagonal and this diagonal becomes our uh, the resultant addition of the two vectors so you can see here if you take this point and the value of this point will be 5 and 1 so this is how you can add two vectors and you can uh, you know do this either mathematically or instead of that you can also find it graphically in, in plotting in a graph okay so this is how we can add two vectors so the main thing to note here is in vector addition the values will be added element wise and the shape of the vector should be uh, equal for both the vectors then only we can do addition okay so now let's discuss about vector subtraction so i'll just take the same two uh, vectors so 2 comma 3 and 3 comma minus 2 so we have this x1 axis and x2 axis and we have the first vector which is 2 comma 3 and the second vector is 3 comma minus 2 so it is very similar to vector addition and here also so when we do this subtraction so both of the vectors should have the same shape and uh, here also it is element wise subtraction okay so here it will this 2 minus 3 will be the resultant of this first value and 3 minus minus 2 you can see a minus of minus 2 and the resultant which we will get is minus 1 comma 5 so this is our resultant vector so and uh, there is another thing if you add two vectors you will get a vector you don't get a scalar okay and also if you subtract two vectors the resultant will be a vector and it won't be a scalar okay so these are very basic things but we may you know kind of forget about this but they are these small things which we need to uh, you know remember so when you add two vectors we will get a vector and also it is the same for subtraction okay so the resultant which we are getting is minus five. so now let me explain you how you can do this graphically okay so you can see here we are subtracting the second vector from the first vector right so when you have this minus sign you need to reverse this vector so you know when you reverse this vector what you will get is minus 3 and plus 2 so the reverse vector will be this so it should be the same magnitude but exactly in the opposite direction just 180 degree so it is the exact same vector but in the opposite direction now what you can do is you can again you know join these dotted lines as we have did before and this diagonal will give you the difference between the two vectors you know the subtracted value of these two vectors so the value which we got mathematically is minus 1 comma 5 and when you plot this you will also get this value which is this diagonal and that value is minus 1 comma 5 so this is how you can subtract two vectors okay so the next thing which we are going to discuss is multiplying a vector by a scalar so again we are taking this x1 axis and x2 axis and we have this vector 2 comma 3 now let's see what happens when we multiply a, a scalar so scale we know that scalar is nothing but an individual number so when we multiply this individual number with a vector so the resultant will also be a vector but what is the difference here is when you multiply a vector by a scalar your vector can in, can get uh, enlarged or it can get shrunk okay so we either enlarge the vector or we shrink a vector so it is all about scaling so i'll just explain you this graphically so when you just uh, multiply an integer or a you know a numerical value with this vector so this value will be multiplied with all the elements of this vector so the resultant which we will get is 4 comma 6 because like 2 into 2 is 4 and this 2 into this 3 will be 6 so uh, all the elements of this vector will be multiplied by this scalar so this uh, resultant is 4 comma 6 so when you plot this 4 comma 6 in your graph you will get this so this vector is enlarged so it is double the size of the initial vector and the main thing to note here is the vector which we got 
will be in the same direction as that of the previous vector okay because like the values are similar it is just enlarged okay so it will be in the same direction as that of the original vector so in case uh, let's say that you have multiplied it with 0.5 so in that case your value will be uh, 1 and 1.5 right so in that case so you will get a vector here okay so your uh, vector will be uh, you know reduced in size by half okay so when you multiply it by 0.5 now let's take another example so there is a vector this 2 comma 3 and now we are multiplying it with minus 0.5 so in this case what happens is as i have told you earlier when there is minus sign we need to reverse the vector so you know when you just do it mathematically the value which you will get is minus 1 and minus 1.5 so minus 0.5 into 2 is minus 1 and minus 0.5 into 3 is minus 1.5 right so when you just plot this in your uh graph so this is the point which you will get so here you can see here it is in the same line but the direction is reversed because we have this uh, negative sign here so the, the negative sign will reverse your vector okay and as we have this point 0.5 the size of the vector will be reduced so this is how you can multiply a vector by a scalar and there is so this is also another thing uh, that uh, when you multiply a vector by a scalar you will the resultant will also be a vector okay so it won't be a scalar value it will be a uh, vector value okay so this is how you can multiply a vector by a scalar and finally let's understand what is the significance of angle between two vectors so we have this uh, again have this x1 axis and x2 axis and here we have a vector so this is nothing but a vector so let's name this vector as a vector and there is another b vector and also x vector so the significant point here is the angle between the a vector and b vector so let it be theta and the angle between the x vector and a vector let it be alpha so here you can see here this angle this theta angle is very less than alpha so when the angle between two vectors is very very small then these two vectors are very similar to each other whereas in this case the angle between uh, the a vector and x vector is very large so in that case these two vectors will be very different whereas the a vector and b vector will be very similar so what is the significance of this is so when you have a when you have two data points so previously we have discussed about a person having diabetes right so when there are two person and if you plot those values in uh, in in graph and if you find that if the angle between those two uh, you know data points are like the angle between those two vectors are very small that means both of the person have similar kind of values so similar kind of you know health values that glucose value insulin values etc but if the uh, you know if you just plot the vectors and you find that if the angle is large then that means the you know the difference is huge in those vectors so you can see the inference here so i have just uh, mentioned it here that if the angle between two vectors is small then the two vectors are similar and if the angle between two vectors is large then the two vectors are very different so this is the important inference that we are getting so these are about some basic information about vectors and basic operations about vector in the next video what we shall do is we will uh, try to implement these vector operations in python so we will try to uh, visualize this vector so we will try to plot these vectors in python in some uh, plots and we will try to understand these vector operations in python so it will be a very interesting exercise because like it is an hands on experience of these mathematical concepts that we have seen so we will try to uh, you know do this in uh, python after that we can uh, discuss about some more complex operations of vectors which are uh, nothing but the dot product cross product projection of two vectors and such kind of things so it will be a very interesting topics so uh, i hope you have understood all the things we have covered in this video so i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching